uh, a relatively small group, uh, but to be here on Christmas Day was uh, a real joy. Thank you. Greg. Yeah, Greg, Greg Lynch, I'm school district superintendent for about 10 years, and now I'm the educational service district uh, superintendent for nine years in Bremerton. And so I'm ha happy to be part of this group. What brought great joy this year, unlike last year, we didn't spend time with family. We were able to do that for the last week, which, you know, is really a, a pleasant experience considering COVID. And so again, just thanks for, thanks for inviting me to the group. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Shauna. Sorry, everyone, I realized I, know I was on mute. My name is Shauna Mundell, and I'm a nurse consultant with Healthcare Authority in Olympia, and I work for the Clinical Quality and Care Transformation Division. I have a background in public health. I previously worked at King County Public Health. And something that I really enjoyed this holiday, we were able to go to Multnomah Falls um, over the holiday break, and it was beautiful. Excellent. Um, Adriana. Good afternoon, I'm Adriana Linares. I am an associate program director of the residency program associated with uh, Peace Health. I also have a background in public health. I have a doctoral degree in public health from Houston. And I am, um, I guess, representing myself. And I bought a new car two days ago. So that was what brought me a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, Annie. Hi, I'm Annie Hetzel. I'm uh, the Office of the Superintendent School Health Services Consultant, school nurse by trade. Um, and what brought me joy in the last few days is having all of my family together for a couple of days. Excellent. Uh, Demiana? Hello, I'm, the, I'm Demiana abdul -Malik. I'm the Thurston County Health Officer. Um, previously um, an emergency physician. Um, and what's bringing me joy right now is the sunshine that we're having in Olympia uh, after many, many overcasts. No kidding. Uh, Hannah, come to you next. Hi, I'm Hannah Kubek. I'm a policy analyst with the Department of Health. And what brought me joy is after being gone um, for the holidays, uh, my husband and I came back yesterday and our neighbor had um, shoveled our driveway and we have a very long driveway. So um, that was just really kind and a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good neighbor story. Uh, Jennifer. Oh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jennifer Halsath. I'm a health systems analyst with the Department of Children, Youth and Families. Um, and for the purposes of, of this work group, I am the content specialist for health for the birth to five population within our early learning sphere. Um, and as far as this last week, um, we had some friends visiting from New York who we haven't had the opportunity to see in two years, which has been fantastic. And to have our kids get to play together has just been great. And we're actually in the car on our way to Bend right now for our vacation. So I apologize for the fancy backdrop, but um, I'm sitting in the parking lot of a Sherry's while my family went inside. So I'd have a few minutes of quiet, so. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. Glad to be able to. Kate. Hi, Kate Granfield. I am a public health nurse at Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. And something that brought me joy this week, um, yesterday I went on a snow walk in the woods and that was really fun and pretty. Beautiful. Uh, Lynette. Hi, I'm Lynette Ondek. I'm a school nurse corps administrator. Uh, at the Northwest Educational uh, Service District in Anacortes. And something that brought me joy this week was being able to spend some time uh, holiday baking with my grandchildren. Thank you. Uh, Tao, I'm gonna go back to you. Yeah, thank you, Allegra. Yes, I'm Tao Kwan Get. Uh, please call me Tao. And um, I'm Chief Science Officer of the Department of Health. And something that brought me joy uh, was just sitting around the dinner table with, um, with my extended family, uh, including uh, not only my wife, my daughter, but also my parents and also my sister and her family and uh, just trading stories. Um, that definitely brought me joy. Thanks. Excellent, thank you. Tom. I don't know that I have anything additional to say, Allegra, oh, thank you. Sorry, Tom, uh, I was going for Tom. Oh, Bob. the, the real Tom, Tom. Uh, the Tom. young guy. 
Tom too. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, Tom Locke, uh, and I am uh, on, on this uh, tag and representing uh, the American Indian Health Commission. And I'm a former county health officer and currently is still working with the tribes in a public health capacity and a former uh, State Board of Health member. And so I remember well in 2005 when we started on these these guidelines. So it's a pleasure to do this. And uh, my highlight, uh, my joyful moment was on Saturday, hosting a family gathering with two granddaughters, age five and seven, both fully vaccinated and dancing around in their new princess gowns. Uh, it was quite nice. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Uh, and then Francis, I know you're just joining by phone. Are you able to come off mute, say hello? Don't, oh, there we go. Okay, sorry, uh, Frank Bell, I'm a pediatrician and uh, here with the Office of the Washington chapter of the Academy of Pediatrics, so delighted to be in this group. And I have really enjoyed the snow, like Sam and others, uh, enjoyed seeing it on the trees and on the mountains, and sort of happy to tackle it through the roads this week. But glad to be part of the group, thank you. Excellent, thanks so much. All right, well, thanks everyone. Um, I am now gonna turn it over uh, to Sam again to just talk through a few sort of meeting norms as we get started. Great, thanks Allegra. Um, I just wanna go over some uh, brief kind of logistics items for our TAG members and members of the public who may be tuning in um, and then just share some brief meeting norms that we're hoping to use throughout this uh, TAG process. Um, so uh, just to ensure that our virtual meeting operates as smooth as possible despite doing this for nearly two years now, you know, there's always a bump in the road. Um, I just wanna uh, remind folks that this is an open public meeting in which the public is observing. Um, there will be no public dialogue dialogue today and we will not be taking public comment um, to support this. Uh, folks um, who are joining us as members of the public will notice that the chat box in the Zoom platform has been disabled. Um, if you do wish to provide public comment, you may do so to the full State Board of Health um, at the board's email address, uh, which is listed on the agenda um, and on the board's website, and that is wsboh at sboh.wa.gov. Um, public, oh, sorry. Uh, so this is a meeting of a technical advisory group that was convened by the board, um, primarily aimed at providing recommendations to the board. Today's meeting is focused on orienting our TAG members to this work and providing an opportunity for them to ask questions. Um, if you need technical assistance at any point during the meeting, please email that same email address. Um, and we have a staff member, uh, Nathan, who is monitoring that inbox uh, to help provide that support. Um, and just lastly, I wanted to kind of go through a handful of uh, meeting norms that we're hoping folks can adhere to throughout this process. Um, we ask that everyone respect and acknowledge differences and similarities among ourselves. Assume good intentions and listen to understand others. Be vigilant for unintended consequences. Actively participate and prepare for each meeting by reviewing materials, if any are provided in advance of the meeting. Um, we do ask that TAG members attend every meeting in order to achieve continuity in these discussions. Um, and as a reminder, the goal of this technical advisory group is to provide a recommendation receiving majority of support to the State Board of Health on this particular topic. Um, and thanks everyone as we, for your patience as we navigate this virtual environment. Hopefully we don't run into any tech snafus today, um, but uh, if you do need, do need assistance, please uh, contact board staff. And that is all I have. All right, thanks, Sam. Um, I'm now gonna start us off on roles and responsibilities. This meeting obviously is a little different than the meetings to come in that it is sort of set up as an orientation. So we're gonna be sharing a lot of information with you and there'll probably be uh, less discussion than we'll have in the future. Um, but definitely invite your questions as we go through kind of the roles, um, some of the things around logistics, and then particularly our purpose and charge and expectations, um, especially if you're new to this. If there's anything on your mind, um, absolutely want to hear from you and see if we can uh, help with any questions today. So as noted earlier, my name is Allegra Calder. I'm a principal uh, at Burke Consulting. I'm located in Seattle. 
And most of my work involves policy development at the state and local levels, and it frequently involves facilitating groups like this one that have been charged with evaluating criteria or options to develop recommendations. Um, and I've spent many years in this same role, actually working with the Washington governmental public health system. So some familiarity uh, with many of the organizations on the phone. Uh, my main job, as I mentioned, is really to support our co-chairs uh, with time management and ensuring that we hear from everyone, um, get the breadth of perspectives that we've invited here. Um, and I'm really here to ensure productive discussion. So I am not a participating TAG member. That said, uh, I will occasionally ask some follow-up questions um, to really ensure that we have broad understanding uh, and that nothing is sort of left unsaid or assumed, uh, particularly if we start using acronyms, for example. Um, and I may specifically ask to hear from someone if we haven't heard anything, just to, to ensure that there is some space um, if they're you know, trying to get a word in and we're having a lively discussion, for example. Um, there is a raise hand function. It should be, I think, at the bottom of your sort of Zoom screen. Um, obviously, you're welcome to use that. For those of you that are on video, I, I've got all of you on screen. So if that's not working, you just want to like wave at me, um, you, you're welcome to do that as well. I'll try to track who's waiting to speak. Um, and then occasionally, as we do get into really weighing um, some of the, the discussion points, if there's a particularly lengthy response or we're starting to veer off topic, I may kind of step in and ask you to, to kind of wrap up those remarks. Um, so again, I am here in a, in a sort of supportive role um, and largely just to ensure that we, we make good use of time and have um, proactive discussion and are able to hear from everyone. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to our co-chairs to talk a little bit about, about their role, and then they'll pass it over to, to Sam and Hannah. Maybe I'll start with you, Tao, just to, uh, since there's two of you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, thank you, Allegra. Uh, well, first, I just want to thank everybody for the, that round of introductions. I'm, I'm very grateful that we have a, a committee with such uh, a wide range of, of expertise and experience. And so thank you so much uh, for, for sharing that time and experience during the holiday season. Um, it, it's very much appreciated. I think uh, one of the most important roles that we have as chairs is to make sure that we as a group have, have the, the information that we need to develop uh, solid, uh, solid recommendations. And so uh, part of that, an important part of that is, is, is setting an agenda for every meeting that, um, that will uh, go over all the topics that are needed to, you know, for us to develop solid recommendations, and then to make sure that uh, we have uh, subject matter experts uh, who, um, who can uh, bring their, their knowledge to, uh, to, to answer our questions um, and to help us interpret, uh, help us interpret the data. Um, Tom, anything uh, that you would like to add as far as uh, the co-chair roles? If I could, please. Um one, we have uh, about three or four people who could not be part of the meeting uh, who will join us in the future. Uh, we do uh, really count on a broad view. As a representative of the State Board of Health, uh, it is the State Board of Health that does make the decision about what uh, is included in our requirements for uh, vaccination before school entry. Uh, this is an advisory group and that I know that's been said, but I wanna reinforce that. Um, but your, our intent is that we want a broad view and a broad recommendation. Over time, uh, we've developed a number of criteria. You're gonna hear about those, about what is uh, in the requirements in the state of Washington. I must admit, we do not agree with everything that the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practice or that the CDC or others have recommended. So our state has uh, the reserve the possibility and the responsibility of picking those uh, vaccines that are most affecting children or where children are the reservoir for the disease. That's an important part. So if you run across a concept that we're stating or our experts are stating, uh, please raise your hand, ask them questions so that they clarify what it is that they're talking about. Uh, as physicians, we love acronyms. I've learned that uh, en engineers love acronyms, computers love acronyms. We'll try not to use too many of them, but occasionally we will have recidivism and fall into that. So again, uh, anything that we've made that's unclear to you, uh, please, please challenge that because we need uh, you to be an active member uh, of this advisory group. Thank you. 
Great. Thanks, Tom and Tao. Uh, and I'm now going to turn over to Sam and Hannah to talk about the uh, staff role. Great. Thanks, Allegra. Um, again, my name is Hannah. I work for the Department of Health, and I know you have all heard um, from Sam a couple times, um, who works at the State Board of Health. So the role that Sam and I play in this is that we are support staff um, for this TAG. Um, we are supporting our co-chairs and our facilitator in convening the TAG, um, facilitating an agenda for our co-chairs, um, per, per our co-chairs uh, direction, my apologies. And then also any emails or information, meeting materials, things beforehand, you would most likely receive from Sam or myself. And so Sam and I, we are not TAG members. We're not, we don't vote. Um, we're just here to support the logistics and the content of these meetings um, and welcome TAG members. If you have questions or concerns in between meetings, um, we are always the folks you can reach out to. And I will stop and ask Sam if I missed anything. No, that's great. Thank you, Hannah. Great. And Allegra, I'll just jump a minute on that last piece on the agenda. The last um, group of folks we wanted to introduce to TAG members who are not on the line right now, but would be for our review meetings. Those would be our presenters. So um, while well, Sam will go over the process of how this all works later um, and the criteria for which a vaccine would be reviewed through, um, for all those criteria pieces, we'll have presenters presenting to the TAG. So they'll bring some information, they'll bring PowerPoints um, for engagement and discussion. And those presenters, um, Tao said, are subject matter experts, and um, we are still collating what that looks like at the moment. Um, but you would see some presenters, most likely from the Department of Health, to think of our epidemiologist team, our economists, things like that, um, as well as potentially some outside presenters from other um, areas of expertise, depending on the criteria piece. And I won't go too far into that, because I know Sam has a whole presentation on that later. But we just wanted to give folks Kind of an opportunity to understand the different people that would be um, involved in these meetings. All right, great. Thanks, Anna. Um, let me also just welcome Mary Jo Ibarra Vega. Um, you have joined since we since we started. Um, if you want to just say say hello and uh, note what what your sort of affiliation is for purposes of the panel, we'd love to hear from you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Jo Ibarra Vega. Um, I am an outreach and Behavioral Health um, Coordinator at Quincy Community Health Center in Quincy, Washington. And I primarily work with the underserved population, the Latinx and farm worker um, populations here in North Central Washington. And I've been doing tons of uh, vaccine education and COVID vaccination for thousands of farm workers and uh, the Latinx population here in North Central Washington. So I think that's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Really glad to have you here. Um, so we covered the roles of the sort of facilitator, the co-chairs, and our support staff and presenters. We, we are going to talk about your role in a minute, um, which is a really important one. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to pause and see if there's any questions on anything that's been covered so far, because we're next going to move into logistics. All right. Seeing none, uh, and again, um, feel free to raise the hand at any time. Um, but Sam and Hannah, I'm going to turn it back to you, and we'll talk through some meeting logistics. Perfect. Um, so this agenda item is just going briefly through um, the Open Public Meetings Act, and I think Sam covered most of what we wanted the folks on the call to know is that um, the Open Public Meetings Act is probably something some folks on the call are aware of being involved with state or local government, but we wanted to make some space here for those folks who aren't familiar with that. So the Open Public Meetings Act is Chapter 42.30 in our state law, the Revised Code of Washington, and it was passed in 1971 as part of a nationwide effort to make government affairs more open, accessible, and responsive. So it's a tool that enables people to inform themselves about what government is doing and why that's applicable to this meeting and to these, all of these TAG meetings is that the State Board of Health 
are treating these meetings as if they're subject to the Open Public Meetings Act. They're treating these meetings much like any committee meetings that the board convenes. And what that means kind of for folks who are unfamiliar is that the public is welcome to observe these meetings. They're on the call with us, I'm sure right now. Um, and that they will be invited and welcome at any of the meetings. However, as Sam stated before, the public is not, there's not a space for public comment during these meetings but that the board will be taking um, public comments through the email inbox for the State Board of Health. And I know Sam and myself, we have um, a little primer sheet on the Open Public Meetings Act um, that we can give out to folks after the meeting. We can send out to our tag members, as well as a link to a video from the Attorney General's office, which is about 15 minutes long, so longer maybe than some videos. Uh, but it's a nice little primer on what the Open Public Meetings Act means, what is the meeting subject to that look like, um, and things like that. And so we can send both of those resources out for folks um, after the meeting. Sam, did I, would you like to add anything? That's great, thank you so much, Hannah. And just to reiterate, um, at this, these tag meetings, we will not be accepting public comment. Only the full board can accept public comment. So consistent with other committees, um, such as the health promotions or environmental health committee that the board convenes, um, the, there's no opportunity here for public comment. These are primarily business meetings to prepare uh, or develop recommendations for future full board meetings. Um, so there is opportunity at the board's meeting, uh, full board meetings, um, which the schedule is available on the board's website for public comment, or um, you can submit via email uh, to the email address mentioned earlier. All right, any questions on that before we move on? Just one emphasis that it yeah. doesn't have to be electronic. You can send something called snail mail, real letters, and we read those too. Good reminder. Thanks, Tom. All right. Uh, well, next we're going to talk through again, sort of the, the purpose of this technical advisory group in terms of the process, uh, the criteria and what that final recommendation will look like. So um, Sam, are you going to lead that off or Anna? I am. If you will bear with me while I pull up some slides. Okay, and could someone just clarify that they can see uh, a slide? You yep. can see them. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Um, and I apologize if it looks it looks like I'm looking away. I have two screens here and my uh, notes are on one and my camera is on the other and it doesn't quite work out to be the other way around. Um, <laughs> Uh, before I get started, I just want to uh, let folks know that um, at any point during this kind of overview, please feel free to interrupt and ask questions. I um, am not great at managing uh, if folks have their hands raised. Um, so um, Allegra, I may ask that you just interrupt me. Um, uh, yep, so that I've folks got have an opportunity. Up, so great. I'm jumping. Um, so again, uh, uh, my name is Sam Paskowski. I'm a policy advisor for the Washington State Board of Health. Um, and we're just gonna go through today a brief review of the board's process for reviewing antigens for inclusion in chapter 246105 of the Washington Administrative Code or WAC, um, the rules regulatory uh, structure, um, which is the immunization of childcare and school children against certain vaccine preventable diseases rule. Um, this presentation will include an overview of the board's statutory authority, the tag process, and your role in this work, um, and a review of the nine criteria that you will be using at future meetings to consider the COVID-19 vaccine for inclusion in the rule. And okay, here we go. Oh, and that's me and Hannah. Okay. Um, so the Washington State Board of Health has the duty and authority to adopt rules to identify required immunizations for child care and school entry. Um, the board's rule extends to both public and private schools in Washington State. Um, and the board's statutory authority for this comes from RCW 28A.210.140. Um, 
which is the revised code of Washington, as Hannah mentioned earlier, the state statutory code. Um, and this statute states that the attendance of every child at every public and private school in the state and licensed daycare center is conditioned upon the presentation of proof of either full immunization, the initiation of and compliance with the immunization schedule or a certificate of exemption. Um, so as you can see on the three bubbles on that slide, those are kind of the three uh, items that a child may uh, present um, in order to enter school. Um, as I noted, one of those uh, um, could be uh, to, in order to fulfill the requirement, a student may present a certificate of exemption. Um, there are three exemptions that a student may uh, receive. That is a medical exemption, a religious or a religious membership exemption, um, or a philosophical or personal exemption. Um, and I do just want to note there is an asterisk on the last one. Um, the legislature um, in RCW 28A210090 um, removed the philosophical or personal exemption for the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine um, through a piece of legislation, I believe, in 2019. Um, and someone can correct me if I got that year wrong. So the Washington State Board of Health has adopted rules under its statutory duties and authority for immunization requirements in Chapter 246105 WAC. Um, and these rules establish the documentation of immunization status required for school and child care entry. Um, and in 2004, uh, the board, uh, during a rule review, the board identified an opportunity to develop a systematic evidence-based approach to assessing immunizations for possible inclusion in that rule. Um, many of you may be aware that the board uses a similar process to consider um, new conditions for inclusion on the uh, state's newborn screening panel. Um, so upon that, the board uh, convened a similar tag to this group um, called the Immunizations Advisory Committee um, with the general goal of developing a set of criteria to consider possible antigens against. Uh, that group met and developed recommendations which were adopted for use by the board uh, in 2005. Um, since that time, the board has used the criteria to consider pneumococcal vaccine in 2007, and uh, the meningococcal vaccine was considered in 2015. Um, following the 2015 technical advisory group, the board did uh, direct staff to convene a new group uh, to review and update as necessary the criteria. Um, so that group met in 2017 and provided recommended updates to the board, uh, which the board accepted. And the criteria that you all will be using this time around um, include those changes. So the board's criteria utilize a framework with a thesis that you see on the screen known as the harm principle. Um, and the original uh, group that uh, developed the criteria endorsed the harm principle and interpreted it to mean that vaccine requirements for children entering child care or school are justifiable when without them the state's obligation to protect the public's health and safety would be compromised an individual's decision would place others health in jeopardy the state's economic interests could be threatened by the cost of care for vaccine preventable illness related disability or death and by the cost of managing vaccine preventable disease outbreaks and that the state's duty to educate children could be compromised. Um, so before the board considers moving forward with convening a TAG, um, there are two qualifying assumptions that are considered to be met. Um, the first, that there is a process for exemptions. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the law allows for a philosophical or personal exemption, religious or medical. So that has been met uh, for the, the antigen that you all are considering and that there is no cost barrier for this immunization. <coughs> Um, for the current immunization under consideration, these two assumptions have been considered to be met. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the nine criteria, um, which are placed into the three broad categories that you all see on the screen now, uh, vaccine effectiveness, disease burden, and implementation. And I think I'll just pause here before we get into the criteria to see if there are any questions and grab a sip of water. I 
don't see any hands up, but feel free also to jump off mute if you want to ask anything. All right, carry on. Okay, um, so the first um, kind of bucket of criteria are those on the effectiveness of the vaccine. Um, and the first criteria is that a vaccine containing this antigen is recommended by the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, or ACIP, and is included on its recommended childhood and adolescent immunization schedule. Um, the ACIP reviews licensed vaccines, makes recommendations for newly licensed vaccine, and regularly updates its recommendations. <laughs> the second criteria is that the vaccine containing this antigen is effective as measured by immunogenicity and population-based prevention data in Washington state. Um, so during the clinical development of a vaccine, the effectiveness is studied using FDA approved research protocols that evaluate whether a vaccine protects individuals from contracting the disease in population-based studies or generates an immu immunologic response <laughs> compared to uh, uh, that have been shown to be effective in preventing disease. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, there may or may not be effectiveness data from Washington State specifically, but the disease prevalence and incidence data um, will be reviewed by the technical advisory group for this particular criteria. The third criteria uh, is that the vaccine containing this antigen is cost effective from a societal perspective. So uh, we are, uh, staff are, are beginning the process of conducting an analysis to consider both the cost of the immunization, for example, the immunization itself, storage, administration, et cetera, um, and the benefits, uh, cost of lives saved, medical and societal benefits, um, and societal or indirect costs, although more challenging to quantify, um, will also be taken into consideration. For example, uh, lost productivity of caretakers due to an ill child. And the last criteria in this uh, bucket is experience to date with the vaccine containing this antigen indicates that it is safe and has an acceptable level of side effects. Um, the known risks associated with the vaccine being considered is balanced against the risks of the disease um, and using uh, available research information and other reports, vaccine safety will be evaluated by the DAC. Um, the second bucket of criteria. Pardon me while I drink some water. Uh, is the disease burden criteria, um, and the first one here uh, is that the vaccine containing this antigen prevents disease or diseases that has have significant morbidity and more and or mortality in at least some subset of the population. Vaccines have the potential to reduce or an even in some cases, even eliminate disease that can have result in serious illness or long-term disability or death. Um, examples of significant morbidity measures that will be considered include rates of hospitalization, long-term disability, disease incidence, and disproportionate impact. And the second uh, and final criteria in this bucket is that vaccinating against this disease reduces the risk of person-to-person -person transmission with transmission in a school or childcare setting or activity being given the highest priority. Um, and for the purposes of this criteria, uh, the term activity refers to school or childcare extracurricular activities, including uh, field trips, sports events, or other activities held on or off a school campus. And the last uh, bucket of criteria are implementation criteria. Uh, the first being the vaccine containing this antigen is acceptable to the medical community and the public. Uh, it is possible to gauge the level of provider of acceptance of a vaccine by querying state professional societies um, or reviewing vaccine uptake data. Uh, there's generally a good correlation between the level of physicians and the general public's acceptance of particular vaccines. Um, and staff are exploring additional ways of accurately gauging public acceptance of the particular vaccine being considered with this group. The second criteria in this bucket is that the administrative burden of delivery and tracking of vaccine containing this antigen are reasonable. Um, we know that many institutions and individuals are involved in implementation of the rule when the board adds a new vaccine. 
uh, to their rule, including the Department of Health, the Department of Social and Health Services, um, our colleagues at the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction, local health, schools, child care, health care providers, um, and families, uh, many of whom are at the table today with this tag. Um, and for each of these key players, there are issues that affect the feasibility of implementing an immunization recommendation. Um, so uh, we want to uh, review that assuring that a reasonable burden of work is present will enhance the effectiveness of the policy. And the last criteria um, in this bucket and overall is that the burden of compliance for the vaccine containing this antigen is reasonable for the parent or caregiver. Um, parents and caregivers are often involved in obtaining vaccines for their children, including transporting them to medical appointments, possibly taking time off of work for those appointments, maintaining their child's immunization records, among other things. Um, and when a vaccine is required for child care or school entry, it affects uh, the parents, uh, uh, affects the health decisions that a parents make on their child's behalf. Um, so that's kind of the, the nine criteria that this group will be considering um, at future meetings, uh, considering the COVID-19 vaccine against. And I want to pause here and see if there are any questions. And then I'll, I'll kind of walk through this flow chart. And Hannah, did I miss anything? Hi, Sam. No, I don't think you missed anything. I appreciate you going through that. I just wanted to let folks know that this might be a review for some of our TAG members, but for folks who are unfamiliar with the criteria that Sam just walked through, it can be a lot of information at one time, and we definitely don't expect you um, to take it all in at once and understand every little piece. Um, again, if TAG members have questions or concerns after today's meeting about the criteria or the process, Sam and myself are both available um, the board also has a handout available on their website that explains each of the criteria. So if folks want to review that as well, that's available. Um, and Sam and I can plan to send out that link to our TAG members at a later time. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so I'm not hearing or seeing any questions or comments. So I am going to um, just move on to walking a little bit um, more in a visual way through the board's process. Um, so we are kind of at the space in this fourth box. Um, and I talked a little bit about the board reviewing against those qualifying assumptions. So in October of this year, the board um, did direct staff to convene this technical advisory group to consider the COVID-19 vaccine for inclusion in the board's rule. Um, and now we've moved into this space of convening an interdisciplinary technical advisory group to consider the evidence, including assessment of Washington specific data where available. Um, so that's kind of, we're, we're starting that process today um, by gathering you all. Um, and as Tom mentioned earlier, there are some folks who were unable to join us today. Um, but will be joining us at future meetings. Um, so kind of the next step in the process for you all as TAG members is that at a future meeting, uh, you will hear presentations from subject matter experts um, uh, relevant to each of those nine criteria we walked through. Um, and the TAG members will be asked to uh, vote on each of those individual criteria and then vote on an overall recommendation to the board about whether or not to add this to the rule. Um, as Tom mentioned earlier, you know, these are just recommendations that the technical advisory group is um, preparing and those will then be presented to the full state board of health for their consideration um, and they may vote to uh, accept those or, or not accept those recommendations. Um, so just a little bit more about the process at the top of this slide, you can see what, what is the goal of this technical advisory group. And I think um, our co-chairs are going to talk a little bit more about TAG member expectations shortly. Um, but briefly, the goal of this group is to develop a recommendation to provide to the State Board of Health regarding whether they should consider adding COVID-19 to the um, vaccine to the, to the rule. Um, 
We intend to have uh, two to three meetings of approximately six to eight hours um, to do that review for the nine criteria. Um, and we, we again do ask that all TAG members attend all of those meetings. Um, we will uh, be asking folks to vote on each individual criteria. So there will be uh, one vote per criteria and then one overall recommendation. Um, and I, I will note that you, you could say that yes, this meets each criteria and uh, that doesn't have to guide your vote on an overall recommendation or the other way around. Um, votes will not be associated with individual tag members. Um, we'll be using uh, most likely the Microsoft Forms platform. We did that for a previous tech we ran uh, virtually um, and we were able to uh, gather those votes um, and the board will be presented um, just with an accounting of the, the yes, no and any comments that folks uh, leave on that, that voting ballot. Um, and then the last piece I'll just mention here is that the TAGS recommendation will be brought to the full State Board of Health for consideration at a future regularly scheduled meeting. Um, and we don't have a time frame there for that, um, uh, but based on future scheduling of these TAG meetings, um, we'll get a better sense of when the board may consider y'all's recommendations. Um, and that is kind of where I'm gonna stop talking uh, and see if there are questions or comments that folks may have around the criteria or the process um, or kind of what the goal of the group is. I don't know, Tao or Tom Pendergrass, if there's anything you want to add uh, related to the charge. Uh, I don't have anything to add except to reiterate the, Tom, the, the point that Tom and, and Sam have made, which is that our, our charge is to develop a, a recommendation uh, to the State Board of Health uh, for, for them to consider. And um, as I think, as we mentioned before, you know, I think uh, probably what's most important for us is to is to base that recommendation on on, on science and, and data, and uh, and so we want to make sure that that that, uh, that we bring all the information, all the data that uh, that we as a group feel we need to to develop that recommendation. Thank you. And I'll, and I'll just add to that that. The realities are that you, for those of you who have never done this before, you think six to eight hours, it can take that long to go through all this. Well, let me tell you that you're going to hear some fairly technical information. You're going to hear some fairly general information. You're going to be uh, receiving um, printed materials from us, usually electronically distributed. We count on you reviewing those. We count on you marking the questions that you have so that we're sure that we meet, answer, meet and answer your questions uh, in the course of the session. It's really important that we do that. One of the challenges that we face in this new world is it's different doing these kinds of analyses, these kinds of, of reviews with Zoom. Zoom's a fine platform, it works fine, but it's a real challenge and that's partly why Allegra is here is to watch you and I noticed most of you've done as I did and that is you shut your video off while others are talking well that's great except we don't get the visual feedback that we get when we're sitting around a room to say oh oh you know Tom has a question here we need to get back to that so we're counting on you to be a little bit more aggressive um, you know we can't just let the folks who want to talk uh, what I uh, you know those of us who are verbals really like that part but those of us who are nonverbals like to uh, have thoughts and involvement so we're trying to engage every one of you and the last is that that you're going to receive these meeting materials we're going to make the assumption that the materials that have come to you have been read by you We'll try to keep them. We're, we try not to send uh, mounds of paper that are equivalent to a thousand page novel, although they're not always as exciting to read as a novel. However, we do want you to have looked at them so that you know where you do not understand 
what's being given. It's really important. And part of the reason for the broad range of, of people on the, the advisory group is for each of you to come together and say, where is this and what is it doing? So some of it is, yes, the technical medical uh, stuff. Does the vaccine work? How, what, how does it work? What does it do? What's good about it? What's rotten about it? But it also means, can we actually deliver it? Can we really be certain that every child entering uh, childcare uh, or uh, the, the school systems uh, truly have the opportunity and understanding of what they're doing? So all of those things fall to the responsibility of this technical advisory group. That's the reason we're so excited that you've decided to join us. So again, thank you. Great. Thanks to both of you. Um, and that really kind of started into the, the member expectations and I'll, I'll turn it back and see if there are other things that either of you wanna cover or um, Sam or Hannah. I also wanna plant the seed that where we're gonna end this meeting is on um, any remaining questions you have, um, but also based on what you know about the charge and what you've been asked to do, what is the type of information you feel like you wanna make sure you know gets covered by whether it's those presenters or the pre-reads or, or something else, like what do you feel like you need uh, to do your job? So um, that will be sort of our, our final agenda item. Um, but Tao and Tom, is there anything else you wanted to talk through on member expectations? I know we covered a little bit at the beginning and, and you did just a nice job now in terms of um, reading the materials and, and attendance. I think just to reiterate, if you have any questions, yeah, please ask them. Chances are that somebody else uh, yeah. may have that same question too, and it'll be really, oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so absolutely, uh, ask questions, uh, uh, be critical of the data, um, and um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, just have an open, open mind. Yeah. I, I guess the other thing I want to emphasize, Allegra, is that that uh, there are currently 732 people uh, watching and observing this activity. We have a responsibility to them under the Open Meeting Act, but that open meeting discussion is with the board, uh, not so much with this technical advisory group. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't want you folks to be here. We do, but it's this 20-ish, uh, folks, about 24 or 25 folks who are actually going to review the data, make uh, actually stated opinions, their own votes, uh, albeit confidential, about how they interpret each of these criteria and how or can we implement uh, a COVID vaccine in the state of Washington for children. Thanks. Hannah or Sam, is there anything else you want to add just in terms of expectations, et cetera, before I open it up to uh, the full membership here? I think the only thing that I will add is that um, we will be sending additional email communications to folks. Um, uh, and I assume some of that will be around scheduling. Um, so we do just ask that if folks um, are able to respond, um, if you know there's a deadline included in the email to please respond in time so that we can um, make those adjustments as necessary um, and, and make sure we can uh, facilitate future meetings with all of our tag members. Um, so we do just ask uh, timely responses. <laughs> Excellent point. I think scheduling is the hardest thing almost anybody does these days. Anna? And uh, I would just add that, um, uh, like Tom said, a lot of our TAG members have very different um, seats that they're filling on this group and different perspectives that they're bringing. So we all hold different knowledge and different areas of expertise. And that if the criteria right now seems outside of your area of expertise, that is okay. Um, we welcome all our TAG members to the table and appreciate your unique perspective. And we are, as we start lining up presenters, as we start um, the subject matter experts gathering information and preparing it for the TAG, um, we are making sure that our presenters um, present in a way that's accessible to everybody and let leave space for questions, um, clarifying questions and concerns and, and discussion. And so, I know that uh, Sam's presentation on the criteria can seem quite technical and maybe a little bit overwhelming. Um, and I just wanted to clarify for everybody here that you belong here and, and that we are excited to have you and 
um, that we will be asking folks to present their information in a way that is accessible. Great, thank you for that. Um, so the only other thing that I'll add is that we, uh, these will be long meetings uh, virtually and they will have breaks. Um, so we'll make sure that you have an opportunity to stand, step away from the screen. Uh, I know that it, it is tiring in a way that sitting in a, a conference room um, together is not. So we will absolutely take that into account. Um, so let me open it up. We're a little ahead of schedule, uh, which is, is good, not always the case, uh, but we certainly will not hold everyone here until 2.30 if we don't need to. But I do want to leave some space for any questions you have on material that was presented. And then again, back to the idea of if, you know, knowing what you're being asked, um, what do you hope will be covered either in a presentation or a reading, or what do you feel like you might need to do your job that you kind of want to make sure uh, will be included? Hi, Annie from uh, OSBI here. One of the things I'm wondering about is the impact and the ability of the YIS or WAYS system, as it's called, the online database, to keep up and adapt to additional requirements. There's um, experience with school nurses that there are frequent, frequent uh, common glitches that take a long time to fix. And uh, in this environment, it would not be good to um, have that happen. So how, how we address those technical issues would be very important to me. Great, thank you. That's exactly the sort of thing we, we wanna hear. Um, anyone else? Ah, there is a, a question about um, if we'll have a final list of participants that can be shared. Uh, and I assume Hannah and Sam, once you, I know you have some follow-up materials to send, um, will you be sending out a full roster with that? Um, so we are uh, working to just finalize that list and can likely share that um, when it's available. Great, thank you. Um, for me, I think uh, would be will be helpful is uh, hearing more about how we're going to measure some of these things like administrative burden of delivery and tracking and like burden of compliance for the parent and caregiver. Um, you know, vaccine effectiveness might be a little bit more straightforward with measurements, but those are a little more ambiguous to me. Great, thank you. Hi, this is Jennifer Halseth. Sorry, the sun's also coming in now. Um, something I want to bring up as far as early learning, uh, the early learning world is concerned, is that we also, what Annie was saying about the, the, the immunization registry is really applicable to the early learning sphere as well, because one of the concerns we actually have is that we don't generally have readily ready access to the immunization registry, mm -hmm. which puts the burden, the administrative burden back on the parents, um, which then for you know, five thousand independent business owners that are the child care providers, you know that then makes um, another administrative burden because not only are we not able to access the immunizations now, you're tracking down all of the parent, you know, tens of thousands of parents worth of immunization records. So, um, just something that's a quirk in the way that the you know the RCWs are written as far as who can access the registry. So, something to keep in mind as we're moving forward. It's not unique to this immunization, you know, into this vaccine or immunization, but. Um, will be an administrative burden as we move forward. Great. Thank you, Jennifer, for that. Um, and then there's also a question about whether there'll be any sort of a summary of, of meetings. Um, and Sam, I don't know if you want to address that. Sure. So our typical process is to provide summary notes um, after meetings. They do take some time to prepare and, and get ready. Um, but uh, we do the same for our subcommittee meetings and have done uh, summary notes in the past for our other technical advisory groups. So, yep, we will put those together as well for this group. Might be brief for today. 
Perfect. Thank Generally, you. however, you will have heard what the votes are at the conclusion of that meeting. What, and all of the comments that are made are included uh, in that summary document that goes to the Board of Health. And just to clarify, Tom, and comments you mean that that come through on the Microsoft form? As we're as we do each of these criteria, as we do the conversations, we do record uh, the comments from uh, the advisory committee. We want the board of health to be as informed as possible, so they will hear all of your concerns uh, as they uh, as part of the summary document that goes to them. Um, you know, the, the points made, it, you know, we recognize that's the reason for that third bucket. We recognize there are challenges in identifying and tracking and finding where and or who gave the vaccine, when, what have you. And uh, as we already know, uh, with uh, the voluntary component so far, uh, even then we've overwhelmed the immunization registry from time to time. Let me assure you, it's getting better and better. It's working better and better, but you know, it's not perfect. And we don't want to have perfection be a hindrance to the good. Anna, did you want to add something? Oh, I was just gonna uh, ask Sam to clarify about the summary notes, if those are available publicly and where folks can find them if they are. Yeah, once, um, once they're finalized, they'll be included on the meetings page um, under each individual tag meeting. So if folks are interested what that might look like, um, there was a technical advisory committee that the board convened for newborn screening last year, and those meeting um, details are up on the web page. Um, they're from June and July of 2021. So if folks are interested what the summary notes may look like. Those are available up there. Any other questions on people's minds or items that you want to make sure will be covered or uh, considered in some way? Obviously, should something occur uh, after you hang up, uh, which is often the case with me, uh, Sam and Hannah are available at any time uh, if you want to pass on uh, questions or, or again, just things that you sort of feel like you need to do your job. All right. Well, Allegra, can I yeah. can I just do one more? Of course. This meeting has seemed to have fairly a uh, fairly formal approach, and we do that because that's what we need to do to get through a lot of information. But our intent is to not only pick your brains about how to do this the best possible, but to also uh, make it entertaining and fun for all of us. Those of you who are on the call earlier know that I've already, uh, Tom Locke and I have known one another for a long time. And back when we were younger, our hair was a different color than it is now. And I will point those things out over time. So we want this to be a positive experience for you because we're really looking at what is the best we can do for kids in the state of Washington? And part of dealing with kids is for, for them to have fun. So again, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being willing to do this. Great. Thank you, Tom. Um, so our last item is just any final comments uh, from, my, from Tom. You just spoke. If there's anything else you want to add, um, please do. And Tao, I will give you the, the same option. I just want to thank all the committee members again for their participation and uh, yeah, the kinds of considerations and questions you've brought up in the last few minutes is exactly the kind of input that's really, really valuable to us. So, so uh, thank you so much and uh, keep it coming. And, um, and I look forward to, to working with all of you and to uh, discussing um, uh, these criteria and these, uh, these important issues over the, the coming weeks. Great. My, my final comment is now the tough part. We now need from you to deal with probably more than one uh, calendaring probe. Uh, it is going to be challenging 
to tie up a day of yours, ours, uh, in January, hopefully two of them. But we would like to get this moving along as rapidly as is feasible. Uh, that That is, and there are a lot of reasons for doing that. But uh, you will be getting uh, various polls from Sam and Hannah about your availability, uh, whatever. Uh, I guess I have to say, I would really ask that unless you have you know, uh, a major illness or some other major activity, patients to see, uh, students to teach, whatever it may be, that we we beg of you to give us your time so that we don't keep this strung out over months and months. Great. Thanks, Tom. And finally, I'm going to go to um, Hannah and Sam for our next steps before we adjourn. Great. Thanks, Allegra. Um, so I think uh, we have some follow-up materials to share with our TAG members um, that we will send along to you and also um, begin the process of looking to schedule those future meetings. Um, so if, you know, there are, as we look to identify dates, um, if there are specific timeframes that don't work for folks, um, please feel free to notify us right away um, so that we can take those off the poll uh, and, and don't even make that consideration. Um, that would be really great um, if folks have uh, upcoming uh, winter vacations as a real snow lover, I could probably find a reason to go for a snow vacation. But um, yeah, so if uh, I think that's kind of our next step. Hannah, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think that covered it. Thanks, Sam. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to just do my final thanks. I know many of you joined us um, out on holiday or vacation or with other obligations. So again, we just really appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you at future meetings. Um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We are adjourned. Bye, all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, all.